Welcome to another video. Let's take a limit of x factorial over x to the x as x goes to infinity. Obviously, everything is getting bigger. The top is getting bigger. The bottom is getting bigger. Everything is driving toward infinity at a supersonic speed. And when we get to infinity, what are we going to get? We're going to get infinity over infinity, which is an indeterminate form which you cannot do anything with unless you can do some factoring or you can do some L'Hopital's rule. Unfortunately, I don't know any algebra to help me factor as many x's so that at the end of the day I have a simple expression to evaluate. So what should I do? Well, I am going to try L'Hopital's rule. Unfortunately also, I know how to differentiate the denominator but when I differentiate a factorial function, I get some kind of weird derivatives, which I don't know what to do with because it introduces another weird function. We even have to start from the gamma function in the first place. So, um, what can I do? Is there something else you can do? Yes, there is. It is called the squeeze theorem. However, you may not know how to use the squeeze theorem properly if you don't know what x factorial means. Because that is where the problem is. Anytime you're going to infinity, the denominator is usually not the problem. The numerator is usually the problem. Let's get into the video. Let's understand what x factorial actually means. You see, this is a function that says that if I told you what is 3 factorial, I would define 3 factorial as 3 times 3 minus 1, which is 2, times 2 minus 1, which is 1. So my answer here is 6. Let's take a smaller number. What if I said 2 factorial? Well, 2 factorial is, start from 2, you multiply by 2 minus 1, which is going to be 1. So, as you can see, it is just you multiplying, starting from that number, you keep reducing it by 1 by 1 by 1 by 1. We can go higher. What if I wanted to know what 1 factorial is? <laughs> That's hard to write. 1 factorial is just 1. What about 0 factorial? 0 factorial is just 1. So, what about minus 1 factorial? Well, minus 1 factorial is not defined because, see, the factorial function is defined only for non-negative integers. So, I'm talking of 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. You just keep going like that from 0 to, 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 inf to infinity. Just keep going. That's what you define factorial for. So, it is certain that the smallest value you can obtain when you take a factorial is 1 and the biggest value you can obtain when you take a factorial is infinity. So any factorial that you take is between 1 and infinity. It is important for our squeeze theorem. So watch this. It means if I write x factorial, what I'm saying is x multiplied by x minus 1 multiplied by x minus 2 and I keep multiplying and the last number I'm going to get is 1. Now it is important to see what I'm about to show you. Whenever you do a factorial, the number of terms that are really significant is 1 less than the actual number. Look at this. 3 factorial is 3 times 2. The 1 doesn't change anything, so you might as well say it is just 3 times 2. Okay? What do you think happens if I refuse to subtract 1 from the next term? I keep it as 3 times 3. Let's, let's remove this since it's not important. See, this is what I'm going to have. This is going to be less than or equal to 3 times 3. 6 is less than or equal to 9. It satisfies the less than option. The same thing, anytime you write something like this, if I say, you know what, I don't care about reducing the numbers, I just want to keep it the way it is, I know that x factorial 
is supposed to be this, it's going to be less than if I write x, and instead of writing x minus 1 again, I just write x, and then I write x, and then I write x, and I keep going until I get to 1. What I have just written is x multiplied by itself how many times? See, remember, there are this minus 1. There are three terms. I started from three, but I only needed two terms to express my answer because the last term is one and doesn't change anything. So when I write this, I'm going to write x raised to power x minus one. I, I wouldn't do all of them. See, I didn't do all three. I only did two. I didn't do all two. I only did one. So whenever you write an exponent, sorry, um, a factorial function, it always has, so n factorial, is the same thing as, um, let's spread this way, has n minus 1 terms that you multiply together because the last term will be 1, which doesn't affect anything, so this is significant. Okay, now that's what I need here. I'm going to make a claim. I'm going to say, notice, that one is less than or equal to any factorial that you compute. Do you agree? Yes, we just explained it. The smallest factorial is one, right? And any factorial that you compute will always be less than or equal to this case. It will be less than the case where you refuse to subtract or make it smaller. You just keep it like that. Come on. You're supposed to reduce each of the subsequent terms, but if you decide to not reduce each of the subsequent terms, this is what you're going to get. But we know this is supposed to be this, but if you replace it with this, this has to be less than x to the x minus 1. And this is the key to taking this limit. So we're going to build the squeeze theorem from this since we have two inequalities. Now, what do we do? This is our focus. What do we need to make this look like this? We just need to divide it by x to the x. So we're going to divide every term here by x to the x. So we have 1 over x to the x is less than or equal to x factorial over x to the x, and x to the x will always be positive because remember, all the numbers we're using here are positive, okay? Positive. Now, this is going to be less than or equal to x to the x minus 1 over x to the x. Nice. Is there a way we can rewrite this? This can be written as, how do we simplify this? Is there a simplification? Um, we can actually divide, we can take limits. Okay, let's just take the limit of this function as x goes to infinity. What we have is going to be the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x to the x is less than or equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x factorial over x to the x, which is our focus, which is less than or equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the x. Now watch this. What is x to the x minus 1? It's the same thing as x to the x times um, 1 over x, because this is x to the minus 1 divided by x to the x. So I just broke up what was on top and made it look like this. And we can do some canceling. Well, let's simplify one more time. This x to the x will cancel this x to the x. And that's it. Now we have the limit as x goes to zero infinity of 1 over x is less than or equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of x factorial over x to the x, and it's less than or equal to the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over x. I'm sure you know what this limit is. This is 0. It's less than or equal to what we have here, and this is less than or equal to 0. Okay? As x goes to infinity 
of x factorial over x to the x. Nice. So, by the squeeze theorem, our limit is zero because both sides of this inequality are zero. So we say, therefore, the limit as x goes to infinity of x factorial over x to the x is equal to zero by the squeeze theorem. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.